Okay guys, so what we're going to do today is we're going to look at using the foliage tools in uh, Unreal Engine. But on top of that, we're going to be using Quixel Bridge. Uh, we're going to get these sort of photo real um, 3D models and things like that to um, apply to a scene. Um, so yeah, let's, let's just get straight into it, I suppose. So I've jumped into a third person template. Okay, so if I just push play to kind of show you what we've got. Uh, we just have this character that can kind of move about a bit, um, but not much else. So I want to get rid of all this default stuff. So you can just go ahead and do the same. Just delete everything in your scene, because we're going to replace this with an actual uh, landscape. Uh, I'm not going to go into like the landscape tools and things like that uh, in too much detail. It's really mostly going to be about the foliage you want to keep these bits though so there's your player starts where your player spawns in and then you've got your lighting and post 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 processing bits and bobs there so i'm just going to jump into landscape mode this computer's on the go slow i think and then i'm just going to create a landscape um just with one thing with landscapes it always puts your location at 100 um change that to zero if you're using one of these templates because generally speaking your character will just fall through the ground otherwise because you'll spawn underneath of it um, section size don't need anything too big that's 31 by 31 um, you can apply a material first if you want to but I'm going to start with everything being blank that's all I'll need and I'm just going to go ahead and hit create and now we have our landscape created um, you can if you want to you can do a bit of sculpting with the landscape um, just real quick I'll just create like a, a little bit of a raised area here just something so that we've got something to work with um, that's fine smooth that out a bit that's okay uh, and let's come out of uh, landscape mode and back to our selection mode. Okay, so if I hit play now, I've just got this open area. Cool. So what we're going to do now is we're going to dive straight into Quixel Bridge to get our assets. Okay, I mean, you could use something you've created yourself uh, and imported in. You could use something from the marketplace. But yeah, today we're mo mostly going to focus on using Quixel Bridge stuff. So I'm going to go to window up here and I'm going to come down to Quixel Bridge. This will open up the Quixel Bridge window. Um, you'll need to make sure that you are signed in okay, for this to work. So I'm going to go to, um, first of all, I think we'll just give a little demo. So I'm going to scroll down uh, and then I'm going to find um, like a, a rock. This, this guy here will be fine. So I've got this Nordic forest ledge rock. Um, the large one, or maybe I'll go for this cluster of rocks. That's that's fine. So then, what you have is you have an option of what kind of quality you'll want to download at. Now, if you download uh, you know, low quality, you're going to really see the impact on the model. It's not going to look great. Anything from medium and above is actually going to be perfectly fine in most cases, unless you really, really want to go for something super duper high detailed and high quality then you can go all the way up to to nanite um, but i'm going to go for the medium one for this and i'm going to hit download uh, and then that will it'll go ahead and do the download when it's available this little add button will turn blue there we go so i can click that to then add that into my scene and then for me it's it's loaded up my content browser in a separate window here it doesn't always do that but that's fine. I can see the assets that it's brought in. It's brought in the material, it's brought in the uh, static mesh, and then it's brought in the three textures which I used to make this material with. So that's great. Let's close that down. And let's temporarily close down the uh, Quixel Bridge window. And I'm going to come to my content drawer and then you'll see what it has added in automatically um, <clears throat> is this folder called Megascans. Okay, so if I go into here, couple of subfolders and then you'll find that stuff now these scans yeah they are actual scans of real life objects which is why they look so you know photo real 
have been turned into um, 3D models. So the mesh itself, so I can just literally just click and drag that into my scene. And there we go, I have this rock. Let's zoom into it. Go right up close, you can see the detail, particularly on like the materials and stuff, is it's pretty impressive. And that's a medium quality as well. If you want to go ahead uh, and go try the higher quality ones, then by all means go for it. Uh, but that's just a real quick example of how you can get stuff really easily from um, Quixel Bridge. Um, and then you find that it has some um, sort of a collision detection on it. Collision detection isn't always brilliant. If you do want, if the, the collision detection isn't perfect on yours, what you can do, just as an extra tip, you can go into the model itself by double clicking it and just come down here into the collision settings and you can change the complexity of the collision to this use complex collision as a simple one. Hit save on that and then what that'll do is it'll make sure the collision detection is really nicely wrapped around the model um, should you need to do that. Okay, so that's how we can just add things in from Quixel Bridge generally. But what we wanna do is to use some foliage. So what I want is some grass which I can apply to a large area of my landscape here. So I'm going to go back into Quixel Bridge. And this time <clears throat> I'll do a little search, search for grass. So one thing you'll notice is that the Quixel Bridge has a lot of materials as well, all kind of ready to go, which is great. You can use those. Um, but what I want for now is just the grass itself. Um, there's one that I normally use. Yeah, this one, Kiki U Grass. Um, it has the you know the official names of all the types of grass and everything. Um, I think this one's from Australia. Yeah, Australia it says here. Um, but anyway, it's a nice looking grass. Um, so let's go for that. I'm going to go for medium quality again. Um, with grass, in terms of the quality, um, I you, you don't have this nanite option. Notice. Um, so you're if you are going for high quality, if you're using it for a game high quality is not going to be a good idea because the frame rate is really going to dip. Um, if you go for low quality, the quality is so low that it just looks so bad it's kind of unusable. So you really just want to stick with uh, medium quality for grass. Okay, I'm going to hit download again. And just wait for this to download. Try not to go too crazy with downloading loads of stuff from this as well. Um, I always say just download the stuff you know you're going to use. Often people download loads of things and then they, they've, they've filled up their storage space with their unnecessary assets. Okay, there we go. So that's added and you can see everything that's been added here. And this time there's a whole bunch of different meshes. Um, that's just the different kind of variations of grass. So you've got like tall bits, shorter bits, uh, bits that are larger tufts and smaller ones. And just giving that variation to add to the realism. And you've got all the textures again and, and uh, there's also an actual foliage folder here so these ones are the static meshes and the foliage folder is it's automatically change these static meshes into foliage assets you'll see in the brackets there it says static mesh foliage um, so that's also really useful so let's get rid of that for now let's go to our content drawer um, mega scans we've got 3d plants now and then you can see all that stuff here uh, don't need to look at that right now though because I need to go up to selection mode and I can change now into foliage mode okay so with foliage mode what it's done is you can see it's already added in all of our foliage assets from Quixel Bridge it's all there nicely for us already um, and each one individually in the corner has a little tick box you see that so if you are adding in um, like some grass over here and then you wanted to use foliage for maybe you wanted to use it for rocks or trees or something over there um, you don't want it to all apply everything at once so you can change what's being applied by assigning these sort of tick boxes whether they're on or off okay so for my grass I want the whole lot I want all the variation because I want to go for realism with this great so I've got all of that there uh, brush size maybe is a little large. Um, I can turn that down up here. Okay, and then I can literally just click and drag the brush, and there you can see 
the grass being added. Okay, add it kind of around my rock. Um, if your computer is not like a super fast machine like mine, then you'll see that the shaders will take a little while to prepare. So we'll just give it a few minutes to do that. There we go. And then let's just come out of foliage mode for a minute and push play. And then if you have a look at this grass, it looks really, really nice and realistic. Really, really good. Okay. Uh, and you can obviously apply that very, very quickly to a large area with those foliage tools, those settings. Okay. We can also do so, I kind of avoided applying it to where my rock is. So if I go into foliage and I turn my brush size down like real, real low, if you want, you can add in like um, little detailed bits of grass onto uh, 3D models. So for example, if I just add this, that you can see it will apply grass to the models as well. Um, but you know, you might want to put this on like five, really, really small, and then just sort of uh, add in little bits of detail here and there. Uh, maybe with that, you might want to just turn on the shorter bits, you know, that kind of thing. You, you know, you can do that if you want to re really refine it um, down in here, then you can do. It's not perfect for this because I've got everything turned on, but you get the idea. Okay, let's come out of foliage mode. Um, one thing that you'll possibly also notice, or you will also notice when you're using foliage with this Quixel bridge grass, is that if you move the camera away, notice that the, um, the grass disappears. Can you see that? And it starts to look a bit weird. That is to do with something called LODs, which stands for level of detail. And what it's doing is it's kind of culling what's here, um, depending on the distance of the camera. So the, the idea is if you are zoomed out, you would have lots of grass in the picture and then to, for it to render everything would, would kill your frame rate a bit. So um, for sort of gaming stuff, it is quite good, but also it doesn't look good when you're playing. If I come over here, look, the grass just kind of disappears and it doesn't look great. So for a lot of people anyway, they want to get rid of that effect. Um, <clears throat> so if you want to get rid of that effect, it's not that obvious how to do it. So what you need to do is you need to come into your, um, your folder that's been downloaded and you have your textures here and it's actually in the texture that's actually doing this LOD sort of loading in and out effect. And it's in these ones, these materials that are uh, sort of high contrast, green and yellow. There's two of them. So if I just load one of them, you can see what it looks like. Very bright yellow and green. Um, they have this thing here within this level of detail section, you can see called MIP Gen Settings. Um, and you basically just have to change it so that's not happening. So you change it to no MIP maps. Okay, hit save on that one. We'll do the same for the other one, this one here. MIP gen settings, change to no MIP maps. Save that. Okay, um, now if I push play, um, the grass looks great. And if I go away from a distance, notice now the grass isn't just disappearing. There's a bit of a change there, but that's because of the, the shadows that's being casted from that angle and things like that. Okay, but I think that looks great. So what I'll go ahead and do now is I'll just uh, add a few bits and bobs in from Quixel Bridge and, and apply some more grass about here um, just to create a little scene. Uh, so we'll be back in just a, a second. Okay, so just added a few little bits and bobs in there. Not, you know, not, not loads, just um, to add something to the scene. Uh, there's one more thing I had this kind of ram skull thing going on here. If I can put it on top of the rock maybe. Um, hopefully my frame rate isn't dying um, and the video is becoming unwatchable. Um, I could only do this one on my lower spec PC. Um, but there we go. <coughs> I've got a bit of a scene. But the other thing I wanted to say was also the, the landscape below this is still uh, this kind of just checkerboard thing going on here. So if I wanted to change that, uh, what I can do, uh, well, 
if you want to go the extra mile, if you like, then you can look at something called landscape painting. Um, I've done a, a video on that on this channel, so you can just look up landscape painting and you'll be able to find a quick tutorial on how to do it. But if you want a real quick way of just applying a material to the floor, then if you just select like a square on the floor, notice that the, the landscape itself is divided into like a grid. You can just select that, go down here, <clears throat> sorry, in your details section, uh, and then you'll see the slot for a landscape material. Um, I've got the starter content here already, so I'm just going to use the grass from the starter content uh, and apply that to this one square. And then you'll see that you've got something for the ground below as well. Okay, so you kind of combine the texture of the grass on the ground with this three dimensional texture, and it starts to look quite nice. I think one more thing I'll do to to complete my scene. So I'm going to turn the angle snaps off and I'm going to change the rotation of the sun um, because I want to go for something a bit more dramatic. Because why not? Okay, a bit more looking like it's a sunset. There we go, look at that. Okay, so it's taken us no time at all really to make this um, very, very realistic looking scene that we have in front of us here um, with the content from Quixel Bridge. Um, and, you know, you can actually get quite a good frame rate out of it if you want to use it with within your games development projects as well. OK, so have a go. Um, have a look through the Quixel Bridge content. There's loads of themes and loads of assets there and it's all free to use. Um, and uh, yeah, you can create some pretty cool stuff. OK. And that is all for now.